It is a film about two couples and their kids that meet on holiday in Italy and uh, they get on really well and one couple uh, is a family of professionals that live in London, they're from America, the other couple are also, well one of them is a professional, <clears throat> he's a doctor and they live on a farm in the West Country. They're very opposite or apposite uh, styles of life. One very rural, in touch with nature, and one very urban and very modern in its, uh, you'd recognise it as very modern in its functionality and its dysfunctionality. The other couple, us, in the countryside and the farm, seem very sort of the good life, almost. Um, the, our couple who live in the country decide to invite them post-holiday to the countryside for a sample of good old English living. And, um, and then, once they've got them on the farm, things start to become less comfortable, less friendly, and um, certain games start to be played uh, between the couples, um, resulting in some really uncomfortable moments, uh, some really cringeworthy moments, some really icky moments, and then ultimately some really horrific moments as well. It's talking about lots of things. It's talking about social propriety, social uh, drone-ness. Um, the Daltons represent a family who are just going through the motions in modern life and, and doing what's expected of them, not necessarily uh, doing what makes them happy or, or in any way that is exhibiting uh, empowered behaviour. And then they meet this family, the Felds, from the countryside, who seem to have a foot in their world. One of them seems to have been a doctor and, and um, seems to understand modern life, but at the same time is all about reclaiming agency and authority and taking responsibility for your own happiness. What kept me going after page like three was the fact that these felt like real people and they felt like, it felt like a character study uh, about, not just anybody, but about people trapped in the grind and then this opposite couple who seem liberated from the ground. And that immediately was brilliant conflict that seemed very much based in something that I could recognise and something that seemed very aspirational. Us, the, this crazy couple with, with unspeakable passions um, actually are a beacon of hope and light to this couple, the good guys, to the good guys who are suffering. They see us bad guys as a beacon of hope and light, and that's why we attract them, you know? Uh, so that's what kept me going. Mackenzie's, Mackenzie Davies is just, like, amazing in this, and I don't think you've seen her play a character like this before with such, so disempowered at times, but really struggling and fighting against that and really, like, pushing against the cage of that the whole time. Um, and she's just so true. I love working with her. We've got Scoot McNeary, <clears throat> who's just got this, he's actually quite a masculine dude. He's probably more paddy than I could ever be. Like when we're doing all the stuff in the woods and shooting guns and shooting rifles and like dealing with animals and stuff like that, he does all that anyway. He is like a kind of man of the country, you know, on his ranch in Texas. But um, so the fact that he is putting on this sort of beta male uh, of modern times so effectively, hats off to him, he's an amazing actor. Their language of love is so particular, is so peculiar, is so physical, is so violent, is so loving and, and true. Uh, and getting to find that with her has been the thing that I didn't necessarily expect when I first read the script. When we got into rehearsals, we found, we started to find that that was something that we could use to fuel the truth of everything they do. On a scale of one to 10, this film is a mindfuck. Uh, I'm hoping it's like a nine and a half. But you also, the, the good thing about this film is that you see it all coming. There's nothing gonna happen, I don't think, that you don't see coming. But that's why it's terrifying. Because this couple should see it coming and they don't, they keep going. They keep, and that's one of the great things about if there is a horror element to this film, it is that thing of like, don't go down the dark corridor. The minute they meet us, we are their dark corridor and they can't stop going down it. And it's great working with Blumhouse again. He's a clever guy, he's a clever company. They know how to 
do they know how to invest in and create material that is um, that is accessible, that's part of a genre that people want to consume, and then while they're consuming it, they're generally getting way more than they thought they came for. Uh, and you see that as part of the DNA of most of their work. Um, so no, it's, it's I've had I've had nothing but great times working with Blumhouse. It's a, a horror movie that plays with um, the horror of social awkwardness and sort of the everyday and places it on the same plane as uh, more traditional horror where your body is at risk. When I read the, the script, the one thing I really, really liked is it has that classic horror movie movie thing of the lead characters like continuing to put themselves in danger and and it being frustrating to see them do that. But at the same time, I always understood why they kept coming back and putting themselves in danger because of this sort of social contract to be um, understanding and empathetic and, uh, you know, excessively interested in other people's experiences so much that it like completely neuters your own response to a situation. I think what interests me about Louise, the character that I play, is navigating a space as a woman and as a mother where you know you're not being cool um, and you know that everybody else is easygoing and right and um, the right sort of energy and person. And she is um, a helicopter mom, and um, she has a lot of anxiety, and she's in this very uncomfortable place in her life, and she can feel herself not being the cool person in the room. Um, and that, and she follows her instincts to protect her family and to protect her daughter, but it's always met with this this like pretty humiliating response of like she thought she was being a hero, but she actually made an enormous misstep. So Ben and Louise Dalton are a married couple and they have a daughter named Agnes and we meet them on vacation initially and they are in this sort of vague crisis in their marriage that's slowly um, expanded on in the movie. Um, but they've, they've moved to London in the last two years. Uh, then the husband lost his job. She can't work because of visa issues and she needs to get hired. And I, I think they're just both quite adrift. Their daughter's in a new school and is having all sorts of anxiety. So it's a family really trying to make something work, but but also like in a, a, um, a crisis that's like they're not letting be too explicit. I think they want to um, pretend that they're having a better time in their life than they are. James McAvoy plays Patty Field, and he is this um, really charismatic, really bombastic, really sort of loud, gregarious man that we meet on vacation who kind of inhabits all of the the freedom and, like, um, vitality and that zest for life um, that, that Louise and Ben are really missing in their relationship and their approach to life. And he's very free and him and his wife, Kira, just seem so in love and spontaneous and impetuous. And, um, and yeah, we meet them on vacation and they kind of, uh, sweep us off our feet and give us a nice little injection of, of, you know, possibility in our marriage when we meet them. And then, uh, and then we decide to do the thing you should never do, which is hang out with vacation friends after the vacation. Ashling Franciosi, she's found so many layers of um, humanity and like a very manipulative um, performance of weakness at times that is so interesting. Daniel Huff, who plays Ant, is about the cutest boy I've ever seen in my life. He, uh, he is silent for the entire movie and he exists a lot on the periphery of scenes, so I hadn't really watched him or, or seen what he was doing until recently we were shooting something kind of the day after we shot all of our Scoot and mine and, and Alex's coverage on it. And so I got to see what um, what Dan was doing in this scene. And in like this completely silent performance, he's built this like heartbreaking little boy who's so hopeful for 
an ulterior um, reality um, and so crestfallen at times. But he just has like the most beautiful little expressive face and he's, he's so lovely and it's his first job. I think this movie is about the perils of social conventions and social rules and how we frequently ignore our gut instincts and the voice in our head saying that something is not quite right for the purpose of being polite um, and how that can, yeah, how we can get ourselves into sticky situations. Kira is Paddy's wife and when we first meet her she's very warm and unthreatening and um, I think she just comes across as a very lovely young woman and caring mother and loving wife. Um, I think she's a great balance to Paddy's eccentricity <laughs> and kind of boisterousness and I, I think that's really important for getting uh, Louise and Ben intrigued by them and kind of being willing to hang out with them. I don't want to give too much away but she definitely has more going on. Paddy, who is played by the incredible James McAvoy, who I have described multiple times at this point as a prince, but he really is truly a prince. Um, Paddy is full of life, a kind of a larger than life character who thinks that, you know, you should go back to your primal instincts and act on them and not be so constricted by social convention and social norms and, you know, that we've all been conditioned by um, well, societal rules, but social media, phones, technology, and I think he really tries to speak to Ben's need to feel masculine, to feel like a man, and he preys on his vulnerability, I, I guess. Um, and he's also just fun, and he says the things that you shouldn't say, which I think secretly everybody, you know, really enjoys when someone actually says some of the things that you might think but you're not supposed to say. Um, and James just brings Paddy to life so perfectly. He's so charming, but also intimidating and animalistic in the way that he portrays him as well. He's, he's um, it, it, I couldn't think of anyone better, honestly. In this story, you have two couples who meet on holiday. You have Ben and Louise, an American couple who are experiencing some marital discord and some issues and are feeling quite disconnected and they meet Paddy and Kira who at first meeting seem to be the antithesis you know they seem very full of life and passion and sexy um, and they basically invite them over for a weekend in um, the countryside in England and very quickly <laughs> you realize that it was probably a mistake for Ben and Louise to go. I think with Louise, there's, um, in the hands of a lesser actress, she could become a very just irritating, one-dimensional <laughs> female. And it's really important that that's not what the character that comes through. And I think with an actress like Mackenzie, just her, just by very, the very fact that she's the person playing her, she already has so much depth from just the get-go. And I just, I really admire the way that even in rehearsals, she was bringing up such interesting, yeah, and intelligent points of view that um, just then end up making the whole film better, not just her character, but the, the, the I, I really feel like when an actor brings intelligent questions to the table to enrich their character and add more depth to their character is because they want the world to feel even more truthful. And, and, and she definitely, definitely does that. He's lost all of his confidence. Um, he, he's sort of searching and trying to find himself again, and he comes across Patty, who is everything that Ben wants to be. He wants to be confident. He wants, you know, his... He wants to be able to hunt. He wants to be able to fish. He wants to be able to take his life back and get his confidence back and his, his you know, self-security. And Patty is one who sort of opened up this door to say, look, I can show you, uh, you know, look at me. It's very, very um, infectious. Um, and Ben looks at it as sort of a, the answer to his sickness. You know, is that if I could be more like Patty, my whole life would be better. Luis is Ben's wife, and I think between the two of them, they're really struggling with sort of communicating and have hurdles in front of them that they're having a really difficult time sort of overcoming. And I think that we meet Ben and Luis during that time.
James McAvoy plays Patty, um, and I have to say he's absolutely phenomenal in this movie, and it's been a real absolute joy to watch him work and, and to work with him. I think the um, silence in the film is sort of a metaphor to the theme of the film. Um, someone's tongue being cut out is essentially, it feels like it's related to the things that we don't say in life and the things that we, we should say in life. Um, politeness, uh, when somebody's out of line, we want to be polite and handle it, handle it the right way, and so we silence ourselves. It does feel like that we're doing something different with the genre. Um, in keeping this film that draws you in with these sort of relationships and sort of like the trials of, of couples and the struggles that they, that they go through, that you really start to feel like you're not watching a thriller or you're not watching a, a horror film genre. But this idea that you get these, um, you get to fall and care and, and root for these characters but not through a place of survival, of a place of um, their own inner humanity, is what's different than most horror genre films. Um, and I feel like um, James Watkins and Blumhouse have done a really wonderful job at sort of um, encapsulating that. I thought it was a real opportunity to, to sort of build on some of the themes and, and, and to look at, say, toxic masculinity and how Paddy's character is this sort of bad mentor for Ben. Um, and, and to look beyond into the third act in terms of agency of the characters. I, 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 I think there was something interesting in terms of not just how people are uh, constrained by polite society, but also when we're confronted with violence, how we, act, we react to that. Uh, and I thought there was a real interesting way to sort of further explore how the characters think they will react and how they do react. Whether you call this a horror film, a horror thriller, or a psychological thriller with horror elements or whatever, for me, what makes that sort of film very interesting is whether is the relatability of the concept and the relatability of the situation and the truth in the characterization. And actually, really, I think what's interesting about this is if there's a sort of dark corridor that the characters are walking down in this film, it's the dark corridor of psychology of the of the characters they're interacting with and the scares of that. And and for me, that's much more interesting. Paddy and Kira Feld live on a farm in the West Country. Uh, Paddy is a very exuberant, outgoing guy. Um, and Mercurial, I suppose, is how you d d define him. He, he, he's, he's the life and soul of the party, fun, pushes boundaries, and very much an outdoorsman. Um, and I think... There's a sense in which when Ben, who's a slightly more closed character, sees him, he sees the potential for um, somebody who can show him a better way of living. The Daltons are an American expat couple living in London. Uh, they moved there uh, for Ben's job, and then the job fell through and they stayed there um, because they had a visa and he wanted to make it work. It was sort of, it was his motherland, as it were, uh, and... Uh, He's a middle-aged man who's in somewhat slightly in crisis, I suppose. Not sure what his, what his sense of self is, sense of masculinity, feels a little superannuated and, and uh, kind of possibly at some level a bit troubled and angry by that. And, um, and his wife has sort of stood by him, but there's fractures in their relationship. And, you know, they've got an anxious daughter uh, and... And they're sort of struggling through life a little bit. And when they meet Paddy and Kira, they they sort of, and they're invited for this weekend away. It's almost like it's going to be kind of couples therapy or something, that they can go and possibly unlock themselves by, by, by hanging out with this freer, unshackled couple. But obviously it doesn't turn out that way. Yeah, it was important to have Paddy to be as sort of seductive as he is scary, so that we always, we talked about red lights and green lights or hot and cold, so that... You, you know, there's a lot of sort of almost truth in some of the stuff he says, like there are with these demagogues. They get a, a little bit of truth and then they and they sprinkle it with a lot of bullshit. And, and, and 
you know, Paddy has that. So, you know, he when he takes them to the farm, the farm is beautiful. He takes them on these amazing walks. He does know the countryside. He knows how to make fire. He knows how to forage and, and do stuff and, you know, and shows them cool stuff. So, um, you know, and, and, he, and he is fun and he's, and he's got this quirky sense of humor. And as Americans, they're looking at them going, okay, is this guy saying the unsayable or is he just being a sort of cheeky Brit? He is 100% like the most dedicated professional actor you could ever work with. He's an absolute delight, and he is just phenomenally gifted. And, and there's one thing being gifted, but there's also sort of bringing it. And, you know, when he got number one on the call sheet like that, all the other cast were, like, in awe and looking at him. And when he turns it on, he is on, and he is so in it. And you do a take, and you'd say at the end of the take, oh, that thing you did. And he was like, you know, when you said that, or you added that little line, and he's like, I did that? And, and he doesn't even know because he's so in the present moment. I've never, and you can do 15 takes with James and he, he'll give you 15 different things. You, if you, you know, you go, what about this? And, and so it's such a brilliant game of tennis with him. You know, you, you give him something, he hits it back with top spin. It, it's, it's a delight as a director to have somebody that gifted and that engaged.